Hey everybody, welcome back. Leo Pato TV. Thanks very much for tuning in, guys. We're back at work here right now. It's early in the morning and we're finished the stand for the 120 gallon saltwater coral reef tank. You can see the oak stand behind me is all stained and built and ready to go. I'm not sure if the owner wants to put uh, some doorknob handles on there, but still going to ask them but those are just some final touches that we can worry about later on uh, for the most part what we're working on right now is building this sump right here this is a 40 gallon sump which measures a 36 inches long 18 inches front to back and 16 inches tall 40 gallon breeder the bottom glass is tempered so it cannot be drilled the side walls are non-tempered so they can be drilled I'm not going to be drilling them but that's just some extra information that I wanted to pass on since we're here talking about this 40 gallon breeder so this is going to be my sump filtration system for the 120 gallon tank if you look on this wall right here I have a bunch of glass baffles that I cut out yesterday we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven baffles. I came up with, um, well, I drew two layouts of two different sumps. One was a three chamber sump and the other one was a four chamber sump as I wanted to squeeze in a refugium. So here you're looking at a drawing of the four chamber sump. Starting on the left hand side is the live rock. Second is the skimmer. Next would be the refugium, and finally on the right hand side is the return pump. Above that, you'll look at the drawing that I made. Rebel live rock on the left, skimmer, refugium, and then return pump. So I cut all the pieces of baffles because that was my original plan to size and everything, but we had a little change of roof, a little change up, and I noticed that as I tried laying it out here on the sump, dividing up all my baffles within 36 inches long, didn't really give me the opportunity or the space that I was looking for to have a nice size refugium. Or another option can be is to have my to have my drain and my skimmer chamber together in the same chamber. But I kind of, from my past experience and what I want to stick with in my filtration system. Um, I want to have its own live rock chamber, which is chamber number one. Next would be the skimmer. Next would be the refugium. And finally, the return pump. But again, long story short, with the 30 inch, 36 inch sump and the way I wanted to design it, I just said, you know what? Let's just keep it simple. We're not going to have a refugium in this sump and we're just going to keep it with three chambers. Live rock chamber, skimmer chamber, and return pump chamber. And another benefit with that would be having a larger return pump chamber, um, which can hold that, which can house more water, uh, more volume of water in the return pump chamber. <clears throat> which, just in case if you didn't have an auto top off, it would last a little bit longer since that return pump chamber is a little bit bigger. I'm ready to install these glass baffles on the sump. We got some uh, clear or black silicone left over from the tank build. You see that I've already used my square here and I marked out these lines and measured all out, measured out where I wanted to install these baffles. I got a bubble trap over here on this end and I just used the handy dandy uh, square here just to make sure that everything's nice and square. And I did the same thing on this side as well. Mark these lines here so I have a reference point on where to install the baffles. So I'm gonna install the baffles with just electrical tape right now to hold them in position. I'm gonna use something underneath some of the glass baffles to prop it up. And as I need, make like a one inch gap for an example underneath, um, underneath some of the glass baffles. And I'm gonna go ahead and silicone it, let it dry, take off all the, let it dry for like a day, take off all the, um, take off all the electrical tape and just let it cure until we're ready to install everything. So I think that's it. I'm ready to go. I explained everything I wanted to explain. So stay tuned. You know what it is, guys. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Hopefully you guys can learn something along the way. And uh, don't forget to subscribe because I'm sure you guys are going to want to see the finished product of this tank build. Okay, we got the glass baffles all in location with the sump. 
we just got the four actually we got one more to install I'm going to install that uh, tomorrow once this is all dry I'll be able to remove the uh, spacers that I put which are styrofoam spacers to elevate it that one baffle about an inch off the glass there There we go, yeah. So an inch off the glass there, I just put those uh, pieces of styrofoam so I can easily remove it tomorrow once it's dry. Same thing over here to elevate this first piece. I raised it up with those uh, pieces of styrofoam there. So I'm gonna glue in these, uh, silicone in these four pieces of glass right now into the sump. And then tomorrow once those are all dry, I'll install the rem last piece, which is this piece right here, 17 and a half inches by seven inches tall. So to give you a heads up on or how this thing's working, water's gonna be draining into this filter, or this uh, chamber. It's gonna be going underneath this piece of glass. You can't really see the underneath of the piece of glass because of the trims in the way. But underneath this piece of glass, up over this piece of glass, into this skimmer chamber, which is about uh, 14 inches, give or take, left to right. And then once it's in the skimmer chamber, skimmer's going to do its thing. It's going to come over here underneath this piece of glass and then boom, over that last piece of glass that I still need to install. And you can see the line right there that I drew in permanent marker. I'm just going to silicone this bad boy. It will be dry tomorrow. Silicone that last piece. And then uh, this sump is all pretty much ready to go. Stands all ready to go. Uh, what's left, I got to drill the 120 gallon, the drain and the return. And I got to install the overflow box, silicone that in. And soon enough, this bad boy will all be installed. Can't wait, man. I love the color on this uh, stand. Beautiful color. Nice, dark, deep oak color. Consistent stain all the way through. Oh, can't wait to see this, the tank on top of here. And everything working fish coral everything inside it's going to be a gorgeous tank man 48 inches by 24 inches by 24 inches with a 40 gallon sump this thing's going to be a beast can't wait to see it we're going to put two led lights on it two led fixtures full spectrum stay tuned guys you know what it is i told you guys lots of projects happening and i uh, just want to share with you guys along the way maybe you guys can learn something or give me some uh any comments or suggestions or tips and tricks that you guys may have that works for your reef tank built. All right, guys, I sped up this portion of the video, but I also wanted you guys to see me actually applying the silicone to the sump filtration system to each baffle. I have the same silicone here, which is the clear silicone that I use for the uh, tank build, which is just left over. And I have the same angle cut on the tube, which is approximately a 22 and a half degree angle or even a 45 degree angle, whichever works best for you. You notice I'm applying the silicone to the side wall of the aquarium and as well as the baffle there. Once I apply the silicone, I give it a nice wipe with my finger along the bead. You'll see here that I've noticed that I did not apply enough silicone. So I'm just applying a little bit more and again, wipe the bead with my finger. One tip that I notice when applying the silicone is your position. Position yourself accordingly and which works best for you and you feel more comfortable. As you notice, I'm applying the bead on the right side of the sump here and I'm on the left side. And when I was applying the left side bead of the tank, I was on the right side. Why? It just worked better for me. I was able to see where I was applying the silicone. And as you notice right now, as I'm wiping the bead, I go back to the right side just because that's the way that my hand bends and I can see it. It's right in front of my face and it just works best for me. It's basically trial and error guys. So give it a shot and I'm sure you'll see which position works best for you. Another thing that I wanted to point out here is that when you're applying the silicone on each baffle, you may not always be able to apply the silicone on each side of the baffle. Why? because the baffle next to it is in its way. And this is okay and totally normal. And this is what I've done in this tank build. Apply the silicone on the one side of the baffle that you can easily access and that you are comfortable applying. You do not need 
silicone on both sides of the baffle. Again, there is no pressure or weight on these baffles. It is literally just dividing baffles in between the sump to create a passage flow for the water to travel. Another thing that I wanted to point out to you guys is the size of the glass baffles. For an example, the sump filtration on the inside measured 18 inches. And you would think I'm going to cut my glass baffle 18 inches long. But actually, I'm not going to cut it 18 inches long. I'm going to cut it 1 8 smaller, which will be 17 and 7 8 By cutting the glass baffle at 17 and 7 8 that will allow me to have a 1 16 gap on either end of the glass baffle, which will allow me to apply and as well call it inject the silicone into that 1 16th of a gap. There's a reason to my madness why I would cut the glass baffle 1 8 smaller. By cutting the glass baffle 1 8 smaller, again like I mentioned, you will have that 1 16 gap that you'll be able to apply the silicone in. And mainly the main reason is that you don't have glass touching glass. You want that silicone to act as a cushion in between the glass baffle and the glass sidewall of the aquarium. It is not a very good idea to have glass touching glass as it will, will increase the pressure points if there are any pressure applied to the glass baffle or the sidewall of the aquarium. As soon as the glass touches the other piece of glass, it is more likely to chip or crack. But if you have that silicone cushion in between there of that 1 16th or 1 8th approximately, there will be your silicone cushion. So if there is any flex, it won't be glass on glass. You'll also notice that I do not use any tape, any painter's tape to prep off the area of where I'm going to be siliconing to have a nice clean straight edge. Again, this is a sump filtration, which is not your display tank, not to say that it can be messy or it can look sloppy, but for the most part, after doing this a good handful of times, I'm going to say that it is pretty straightforward for myself and it's easy for me to have a nice clean straight presentable silicone bead. You're more than welcome to use tape if you need when applying the silicone to get that nice straight edge of that silicone bead. Not to say that I haven't used tape in previous sump tank builds, but in this case, in this build, I did not use any tape as you see in the video. Well guys, thank you very much for watching Leo Pozzo TV. Thank you very much for tuning in and go ahead and subscribe if you guys haven't subscribed already. There's a few videos that you guys may have not have watched already on my channel, so I suggest going through my channel and just looking at some of my past videos and taking a look at some of the ones that may interest you. Also, I wanted to mention my daughter's uh, channel on YouTube. I opened up a channel for her, YouTube channel, and I've been helping her out, and her channel is called Juliana Super Channel. She does a few things regarding toys and unboxing and reviews, and I definitely recommend for you guys to take a look at it as I've been putting quite a bit of work into her channel as well, and she's been gaining subscribers, and she has some really great content. So I would like you guys to join and be a part of that, as that is uh, also co-owned by Leo Pozzo TV. So if you support Leo Pozzo TV, I'm sure you're going to want to support Juliana's super channel. Once again, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Until next time.